If you really want to know the traffic patterns that are coursing through your network, one of the best ways to discover that is with a really amazing tool called NetFlow. Let's begin. One of our challenges in managing a network is to really understand what is going through the network. I mean, we may be allowing lots of different protocols, but what's the relationship percentage-wise of HTTP versus, for example, DNS? How much ICMP is there? Who are the top talkers on our network? What are the top destinations? And all of this is very useful information and easy to get if we simply use a feature called NetFlow. And different individuals have different reasons for running NetFlow. From a security perspective, maybe we just want a baseline of what traffic is, and then we're looking for anomalies in that traffic, and NetFlow can tell us about that. Or maybe we're going to go ahead and add a new application or service to our network, and we just want to know beforehand what our traffic patterns look like. All of those are terrific reasons why we'd want to use NetFlow on our networks. Now, setting up NetFlow, the current flavor is version 9, but it boils down to three basic ingredients. We're going to have a monitor that's actually going to look at the traffic as it goes into or out of an interface on a router. That information regarding the flows of traffic is put in memory in a cache for a short period of time, and then it is exported out to a management system. So here's our network management system right here. And as the exporter sends these records over to the network management system, this network management system is going to be running some software called a collector, which can then work with that data and draw beautiful graphs and create reports to reflect what's happening on our network. The actual configuration of NetFlow is pretty simple. We're going to start off with the NetFlow exporter, and the exporter is going to identify the destination address. That's where our collector lives. We're going to identify the port and protocol that we're going to use, and the actual version of NetFlow that we're going to be exporting, in this case version 9, and the source IP address based on the source interface of R1 that we're going to be sending this NetFlow information from. So our intention here on R1 is that we're going to be sourcing the traffic from 1 slash 0 and the IP address there as it goes over to our NetFlow collector, which is running at a network management station at dot .23. In this example, I'm going to be using Scrutinizer as the NetFlow collector, and it's already by default listening on port 9996. So our NetFlow collector is sitting there just waiting for traffic to show up. We can verify the details of our exporter that we created by doing a show flow exporter and then the name of the exporter that we just created. Next, we're going to create a logical monitor object for NetFlow. Now, this monitor object we're going to apply to an interface on R1. And the biggest piece we're going to have in this monitor is the type of information we're going to collect, as well as what exporter are we going to use once we collect this information to go ahead and export it off to the network management station. So in this example, we're going to go ahead and gather traditional IPv4 NetFlow information. And there's lots of options with flexible NetFlow as far as what we could collect regarding our traffic flows. And then once we gather that information, it's put in the cache. We're periodically going to use export one, which is this guy right here, to ship that data off to our network management station at 192.168.1.23 using the ports and protocols and versions that are set up in the exporter for that export. I think it's really important to verify as we go. So let's do a show flow monitor name and the name of the monitor we just created just to verify the details for this monitor. So regarding the type of information it's going to collect, we're going to go ahead and use the standard NetFlow IPv4 information. The exporter is export1. Now it's currently inactive because we haven't yet applied this monitor to an interface. So without further ado, let's do that. Let's go into interface gig 1 slash 0 and say IP flow monitor, the name of our monitor, and the keyword input. Now that means we're going to be building our flow information based on traffic as it goes into this gig 1 slash 0 interface. Now, if we want to see information that's been collected as far as flow information on packets that have been coming in on 1 slash 0, we can do a show flow monitor, the keyword name, the name of our flow monitor, and then cache. And that's going to show us the information that's in memory right now on this router regarding flows it's recently learned of. Now, here it's saying there's no entries to display, and that's because there's no traffic happening on this network. However, you and I can fix that. Let's go ahead and take this PC right here at dot .25 and I'm going to have this PC go out and make several requests to internet resources. And the reply traffic, as it comes back in, those flows will be recorded as the packets enter 1 slash 0. And then we should be able to see some of that information in the cache. So what I did, I just refreshed five or six windows that were currently open, browser windows. And if we use the up arrow key now to show flow monitor for monitor 1 and look at the cached entries, we are now going to have several pages of entries. For example, here's one of them. 
we have a flow that came from this source address, which is out on the internet, coming back to this IP address. And because we're looking at the flow right here, this router, which is, happens to be R2, is running NAT. So as the packets go out, there's a network address translation for a global address. The reply traffic comes back in. R2 is unnatting, and that's why we're seeing the destination address from the perspective of this interface as having a destination of 10.1.0.25, which is this host where Bob is. The source port is 80 in this example. Bob's initial source port was 1816, going to the well-known port of 80, and the reply traffic has those flipped. So the source port on the traffic coming back from the server is going to be port 80, and the destination port is 1816. And that's the one Bob chose as he initiated the session with that server. It has information about the type of service bits. The IP protocol is 6, which equates to TCP. From the router's perspective, it routed it out of gig 20 to get back to this PC. And regarding this flow, there were 71 packets involved. Now, there are several options that we have in looking at the console. We can sort by certain types of traffic and so forth. But the real benefit of NetFlow is having this data all sent over via the exporter to the collector that's running on a management server so we can take a look at what's happening in a tool designed to handle all of that NetFlow information. Now, in this interface, this is an example of a NetFlow collector. I'm demoing, in this example, a product called Scrutinizer. And they've got enterprise editions. They've got free editions. And so if you want to play around and practice with NetFlow and with a collector, I would strongly recommend you download and practice with their product. So here we have our top applications based on ports. As far as top countries, most of the traffic was within the United States. One of the web servers that I went to was located in Ireland. And this dashboard is completely customizable to the way that you want to see it. If we wanted to dive into the specifics of TCP, for example, we could click on TCP. And then from the drop-down, select the exporter who sent us that information. Dot .164 correlates to Mr. R1. And here it's breaking out in a pie chart the different flows that it observed regarding TCP. And then down here for this time range, which was five minutes from 1250 to 1255, because our NetFlow monitor is set up to gather information regarding flows inbound on gig 1 slash 0, all of these sources are resources out on the internet. And the destination is that workstation on the 10.1 network. Setting up NetFlow is fairly simple, and the information it can give us about what's really coursing through our networks is often invaluable. So if you're not yet using NetFlow, you may want to check it out. I have had a blast, and I'm glad that you joined me for this video. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.